The new Netflix film Robin Robin pushes the envelope of what's possible with stop motion animation and follows in the creative footsteps of classic Aardman films like Wallace and Gromit, Shaun of the Sheep, and Chicken Run. The symbiosis with technology has massively helped. We're able to do things now with stop motion that you know wouldn't have been possible not so long ago. The film's young directing duo championed new textures and new visual effect techniques while staying true to the artisanal spirit of Ardman Studios. The Robin Robin world is all handcrafted. Every snowflake in it has been shot in camera, oh. uh, hand animated, <laughs> so we didn't want any CG in the film. Let's break down the timeline and the technique of the new stop motion Ardman flick. The whole production took about two years from when we were kind of greenlit to when we finally delivered the final film. Probably about a year of that was uh, writing and storyboarding. From the script, the film went through the prep and design phases. Before any puppets were built out of needle felt, the characters were crafted on paper. And there's no undo button on the set of a handmade film like this, so Dan and Mikey had to get their story straight with a rigorous pre-production regimen that took nearly an entire year. One thing that we did right from the beginning was to make a color script of the whole film to kind of use color to help tell in the story. You've got to know exactly what you're doing when you get in the room and start filming with an animator. You know, you've got to know exactly to the second what you're going to shoot. Because of that, it means that you effectively make a rough version of the film before you go on to set, before you even start shooting. That version, we call it an animatic. It's made from storyboards and, and edited together with like scratch sound and music. And we'd often do like the voices of the characters if we hadn't recorded them by then. So you kind of get this rough impression of what the film's going to be like. I think we had initially sort of eight, eight months to build that animatic. Because of the nature of stop motion, you need to be shooting scenes all at once. So that required crafting at least five different puppets of each character in at least three different scales. So that's 75 puppets, including nine robins, 11 magpies, 20 mice, four cats, four squirrels, three frogs, and three hedgehogs. Our job on a day-to-day -day basis was so much fun of going into all these different rooms with like different parts of the world being rendered at different stages. And pretty much every set was sort of built specifically for a particular set of shots. The art department are busy the whole time kind of crafting the next set. That's sort of the tradition of stop motion sets is that they're always able to break apart and move around, partially because you've got to get animators into the set. Here's Dan mapping out the path of one of the characters, blocking the action, much like on a live action set. The sort of blocking process was a really important part of, of sort of being able to figure out exactly what you're going to get at the end of the shot. Because with stop motion, you know, it's very hard to do a retake because That's it takes loud. so... We <laughs> weren't really allowed on this project retakes. because of the schedule. Once the set's in place, you then uh, have the process of, you have the riggers. There's a huge rigging department. There's a lot of scaffolding that kind of goes into moving these puppets around. And then we have the camera department, which uh, was led by our incredible DOP, Dave Alex Riddit, who is the, the DOP on the wrong trousers, and has a, a huge uh, tradition of, of making films at Ardman and he would then light the set, so you know, he would paint with light. Um, so there's lots and lots of camera setup and lots of lighting preparation that goes in then before the animator is finally able to step up to the stage. And then we had about an eight month shooting window, so we filmed for eight months. A team of 14 animators each banked about eight seconds of footage per week. We don't shoot anything sequentially. Well, one shot in particular, it was a big shot and a big set piece of the film, which is Robin's song right at the beginning of the film, where she kind of dances her way through their rubbish dump home. It was a pretty long shot, it was like over 20 seconds, and also involved a camera move and a lot of choreography. There was a lot of puppets in it. Probably took about a week to set up the motion control and get the, the camera working right. After that, you'd have like all the lighting tweaks, which took probably another few days or maybe a week. And then once the animator's ready, they'll come in and um, for that particular shot, he did a block which took him about a week. That whole one shot was probably like five weeks uh, in one unit. So you've got to make sure that that camera move is right and that it's not going too fast and it's going to leave them behind. So he was in there every day for two weeks animating this sequence. And we just sort of like locked him in there. <laughs> <laughs> Came back in two weeks and he'd made this absolute masterpiece. We're on our way to break into a house. The fundamental basics of stop motion have probably remained the same for a hundred years, which you 
have something, you move it a little bit, take a picture, move it a little bit, take a picture, move it a little bit. So there's 12 frames per second, so 12 images every second are taken. As an animator, they've got this great ability to plan things out very meticulously, but also capture like a real kind of spontaneous energy. Mm -hmm. We had this process where we would take each shot and act it out ourselves. Um, when you can like act little moments out yourself, there's sort of like a really uh, immediate nature to, to that. You take that video reference and when you brief the animator on the floor before they, they film it. So we, we actually do have a version of the whole film with pretty much just me and Mikey acting out every <laughs> character in it, which is, is sort of insane, but um, probably for many people, probably more entertaining than the finished thing. Some shots would be made up of multiple, multiple exposures. We use a program called Dragon Frame, which uses references. We're able to use like overlay images with the camera to make sure uh, if we're shooting multiple plates that you know this element's going to match up with this element. But with the software that we've got, you've got a live playback of every frame that you've taken so far. So a big part of the animation process is like watching back what you've filmed and kind of anticipating the next position of the character. That depth you see is achieved by shooting various planes and elements such as snowflakes, snowdrifts and silhouettes separately on green screen, which would then be composited later by a visual effects team. Every element in the film is, is something that's been filmed um, rather than like making CG backgrounds or anything like that. I think the most we had was 60 plates, a plate being like a piece of character animation or an element or a lighting exposure. Um, we were really inspired by like the kind of Russian filmmakers like in the, in the early years of stop motion, like Yuri Norstein and his like a uh, film of Hedgehog in the Fog, where you get this really like incredible sense of, of depth and atmosphere. If you, if you saw how it was done, it would be done in quite a lo-fi way really. The team used a stereoscopic technique of shooting two frames at slightly different angles at once in order to capture depth that would be useful later in post. So although we weren't making a 3D film, what this gave us was the depth information that we wouldn't usually have with a stop motion. You, you usually just come away from a scene with a flat image. But by shooting it stereoscopic, we were able to then use that depth information to embed all of our elements. And so we could have raindrops passing behind blades of grass and trees disappearing into the mist and characters moving through it all without the need of green screen or rotoscoping. I'm not a terrible man. There was the cleanup of the, the neckline and the eyelids of Robin, our main character. And there's, of course, the, the integration of all the elements, the snow and the mist and the fire and the water. We also um, had the rigs to remove, so there was the, the scaffolding that upholds all these characters as, as they're moving along. The kind of elemental build-up of, of things like rain was like quite complex. The magic of stop motion is is that it's all this craft kind of condensed into these frames that you're watching all together and there's a kind of magic and a sort of level of intensity to that that we, we just love. <laughs>